All right, Celtics fans, uh, I almost made a video earlier today about how don't be surprised if the Celtics win this game. The Bucks are the second best non-Celtics team in the East behind the Cavs. So they're younger and they're getting better. And we just had the two best teams in the East besides the Celtics back to back to start the season through a, a disastrous injury. So don't be these overreacting Celtics fans where the sky is falling. Okay, these are the same people who thought the sky was falling when we traded the number one pick and the rights to draft Markel Fultz, right? So they didn't think that a Lakers probable top five pick and a Jason Tatum or Josh Jackson was uh, good enough compensation for the amazing, game-changing, franchise cornerstone Markel Fultz, right? So we're not going to be like them. We're going to stay nice and chill. And uh, Celtics have a lot of growing pains to go through. And uh, especially given that injury, all these guys adjusting to new roles. So because these guys are so new playing with each other, uh, we've got a lot of that chucking selfish ball that we saw sometimes last year would crop up where the ball movement stopped, the trust stopped, and guys taking these tough fadeaway two-point shots or guys, you know, the team just not getting good shots within the flow of the offense so that someone has to throw up a desperation shot at the end of the clock. But everything is fine, guys. Everything is on track. Jalen Brown, if you thought that was a fluke the last game, obviously you now know that it wasn't. But he did play 40 minutes last night, so he was not able to play more than the 28 minutes we saw tonight. Uh, Jason Tatum, though, another solid game for him and on the rebounds, right? Nine rebounds. So he's averaging 9.5 points and uh, 11... No, he's averaging 9.5 rebounds and 11 points, basically averaging a double-double through two games, so that's all great. Al Horford was great tonight, and Kyrie Irving's shot just wasn't falling, so what are you going to do? He played 40 minutes, I think, back-to-back -back against the two best non-East teams, so Shemi Ojale pretty played pretty rock-solid. Um, so we're getting, you know, it's going to be a little bit of a process, but Terry Rozier, guys, he played real good, didn't he? Um, and Marcus Smart stepping in very solid as a replacement into that starting lineup. And as long as we have Terry Rozier playing great off the bench, then the loss of Gordon Hayward ultimately is extremely manageable. And we wouldn't be seeing Jalen Brown getting all these easy buckets off the dribble because he'd be stuck in the pecking order behind Kyrie Irving and Gordon Hayward, two inferior athletes to the dominant athlete, Jalen Brown. So it was wonderful to see him continuing to stay aggressive off the dribble and attacking because nobody can stop him, just like nobody can stop Greek Freak. And if we hadn't played the Cavaliers last night in an emotionally exhausting game, losing Gordon Hayward, we would have been able to put this game away quite easily. Uh, but it was on the back-to-back, -back and we just kind of faded down the stretch a little bit. So... Keep your heads up, guys. Don't overreact. Stay cool, calm, and collected. And this team is just going to get better every single game. And it's uh, a beauty to watch. So enjoy the beauty. Enjoy the growth. Trust the process. We got a much better process going on here. All right, guys. I will see you soon. I got a new channel, um, Scouts Honor Celtics. So I'll gradually be shifting some of the Celtics material over there. Check it out. Link is in the description. I will see you soon. Peace.